Okay, I mentioned that I was friends for a while with the actor Tom Sizemore. Now, I don't know if you recall a movie called Saving Private Ryan back in 1998. Remember, it was directed by Steven Spielberg and starred Tom Hanks and Matt Damon and a number of other actors. Anyway, uh, Tom Sizemore had a very big role in that movie. Um, when I met him, it was when I was working in West Hollywood and living in West Hollywood at the time. And he lived about three blocks from me. And he used to come into my workplace a lot and we just started talking and struck up a, a, a friendship. And it was around this time of saving Private Ryan and I still remember the day he came in so excited. He had the Los Angeles Times with this rave review. And he was like a little a little boy on Christmas morning with his presents. You know, the, you know, it's every let's face it, it's most every actor's dream when they come to Hollywood. They come to LA and they want to break into the movies to have something like that happen where you're working with directors like Martin Scorsese and Steven Spielberg and you're friends with Robert De Niro, you know. Uh, in fact, he told me he and um, Robert De Niro owned a restaurant together on Melrose. He called him Bobby De Niro and he goes, oh, oh, Chuck, I'm not trying to put on airs or anything like that. I promise you. It's just we do know each other. You know, that's the way Tom Sizemore was, you know, no pretense. It was more like, oh, almost apologetic. Oh, yes, I know I'm famous, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm just a regular guy, I promise. But a very talented actor. I mean, as I mentioned, he worked with um, Martin Scorsese, Robert De Niro, Steven Spielberg. He was on the verge of being on the a list, you know, the Hollywood A list, the major, major stars at the very top. He was so close to being there. Tom's downfall, and by his own admission, he was a drug addict. And he had fallen a number of times. He said Bobby De Niro, Robert De Niro, was the one who helped get him cleaned up quote, unquote, cleaned up, you know, in therapy, you know, we know addicts um, constantly have to manage their illness. It's an illness. And um, when I knew Tom, he was going through a good period. But I, I heard in the news that there was some domestic quarrel at his home with his wife. I don't know the details. Um you know, later he, he clearly was falling off the wagon again. This is when I wasn't seeing him anymore and I didn't know what had happened to him. And uh, bit by bit he started destroying his movie career. Uh, because once you get a reputation in this town for being unreliable, meaning costing money, you know, like people who have drug addictions, alcohol issues what have you, when it starts to affect their work, their ability to show up on time on the set, to know their lines, to be able to do their work before the cameras, because movies are very expensive to make. You've got huge crews of people and every minute counts. You know, there's a lot of stuff when you're a really big star, they'll cut you slack and you can get away with it. You know, if you're that important, ultimately they look at that as the bigger part of the picture, you know. This is a money-making star. But when you're lesser, no, no. I, when I was taking my acting class with Dee, she used to tell us that when you're starting on the business, for God's sake, be on time and know your lines and be prepared. Otherwise, word will get out very fast and you will not be hired again. That's the way this town works. Pe you know, there, there's word gets around. People get blackballed. Tom Sizemore apparently word got out that he was off the wagon again, drug addiction and so forth, because uh, what should have been a starting point with Saving Private Ryan, it just started falling apart, you know, in the early 2000s. I didn't see him anymore. I didn't know where he'd moved to. Um, and there was that scandal with Heidi Fleiss. I think she took him to court, uh, accused him of attacking her. I don't know. And uh, 
And of course, Tom Sizemore ended up in prison. I'm even trying to remember why it was, I think it was because of drug possession. Um, and there were many times I wanted to, to reach out to him, find him, write him. Cause I just, I always knew him to be a good man. He was very good to me, very sweet. Almost like an innocent little boy. For, you know, he was this tough man, you know, that, this real tough guy. Those were the kind of roles he got um, in his movie and television roles. But I saw the, the sweet little boy underneath that. And it was the strangest thing. It was last year. For some reason, I, I, I don't know, I was in the shower and he popped in my head. I could not stop thinking about him. And I thought, I've got to find him. I've got to reach out to him. And the next day, it was in the news that he had had a major, uh, I think they used the word cerebral hemorrhage, basically a major stroke, an aneurysm. Um, he was in a coma and he died a week later. But I was picking up on that the night before. And um, I just wish his soul well. And that's my story about Tom Sizemore.